Hi, I'm Donna Saliska. I'm the scientific director of the National Collaborating Center for Methods and Tools and a professor at McMaster University. The National Collaborating Center for Methods and Tools is funded by the Public Health Agency of Canada and located at McMaster University. This session is about defining the question. It's the first part of the whole process of evidence-informed public health, where after the definition of the question, it involves an efficient search of the literature, critical appraisal of the research that you find, uh, synthesizing the information that you find to look at um, what's the best evidence, adapting to your own local context, your own public health area, implementing with public health practitioners uh, in the community, and then evaluating that implementation with the practitioners and to see the impact on your community. So the first step is defining the question, clearly defining what's the situation or problem that you're trying to fix. Here's a clinical example that's recent for all of us. Um, H1N1 was circulating in the community and we were looking at what could be done to curb the spread of this virus. And the, in this scenario, you'll be reporting to your management team and then uh, to the media about what works. Why does it matter that you take the time to uh, clearly define what the question is? It's, it's the issue of if you don't clearly define the question, you're not sure that you found the answer. So it really involves being clear so that you can make the efficient uh, search. In clearly defining the question, we're looking at this um, uh, formulation called PICO. And PICO stands for um, P, the population of interest, I being clear about what the intervention is that you're, you're curious about, uh, what the comparison is, uh, and then what outcome does it make. So in our example about H1N1, we're concerned about really anyone who's living in the community of any age. H1N1 was uh, impacting on everyone, so there's no particular restrictions about age or uh, type of person in the community. The intervention we might be interested in would be in things like masks or more frequent hand washing. And the comparison would be whatever our usual activity was whenever uh, H1N1 was not circulating in the community. And the outcome, of course, would be rates of respiratory viruses in the community. So when you're starting the search, it gets very uh, much more narrowed down when you're looking for these key terms. If I could just go through quickly another example, it would be perhaps uh, with H1N1 in um, the H H1N1 assessment clinics where people were coming in with symptoms. So the P, the population of interest, would be people attending these H1N1 clinics and the I might be the use of surgical masks, and the comparison would be um, not using masks for that group. And again, looking at the rates of spread of respiratory viruses in the community. For more information and to follow along with the next steps of this uh, evidence-informed public health process, you can visit our website. The website is www.nccmt.ca or the French version, www.ccnmo.ca.